Welcome to spring 2022, a time of birth and renewal, where the flowers bloom and the bees pollinate those flowers, and in which that pollen seeps into your lungs and you end up in the hospital to find out that your lungs actually have been messed up for quite some time due to the world's best friend, Corona. Didn't see that dark turn coming. <laughs> Now, I thought this video would be out by now, but I actually have an excuse this time on why I haven't been uploading, but um, I am going to take no more time and just get straight into the video. Obviously, as the title states, this is very spring-oriented, and I'm very excited to show you the designs that I've been coming out with and the process of bringing them to life, as well as tutorials on how you can make it yourself. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so this is like the, the, the original design sheet that I created right here for the spring video. Um, I stated that I was going to do like a set, like it's going to be a skirt with a crop top or a long skirt, leg warmers, tote bags, cardigans, bandeaus, and accessories. But after figuring out colors and ordering yarn and stuff, the design started changing a little bit. So this was just like the rough sketch area. Um, I first mainly focused on the bralettes, as you can see right here. I added little stars on the parts that I definitely wanted to do, and I made sure to order yarn for all of these except for this one. I didn't order any yarn for this one here. So I mainly focused on bralettes, how would I wear a bralette for springtime, what colors I would wear, and and for me, I stay with fall colors no matter what for some reason. I try to branch out to bring more like happy colors, but I am a moody color type of person. So I stayed with earth tones on this one here, but I forced myself to go a little bit out of my comfort zone and I added this purple lilac tone. If you were there for a stream and you recognize these colors, this was actually supposed to be that grid pattern tote bag that I was doing, but I I was looking at it and I was like, yeah, I don't want to finish this, so I scratched it and turned it into some pants. <laughs> and I definitely did want to add some accessories to the design, so I was making a whole bunch of leg warmers because I personally think you can wear leg warmers whenever. It doesn't have to be winter time or cold outside in order to wear leg warmers. So I designed a whole bunch of different leg warmers and I, I liked the green and the white here. So I thought, what if I did a whole set, like have a skirt, have different variations of a bralette, and the leg warmers itself. So those are the basic ideas that I had for this video. Once I figured out how to make a bra cup, oh my gosh, knowing how to make a bra cup is probably the smartest thing you should, you can know how to do in terms of creating any shirts and stuff, because that knowing that I can create so many different things now and that's what that's what all of these ideas came to mind after I learned how to make the bra cup so we are going to go ahead and start with the bralette here and show you how to make what I made Before you create the bralette, you have to know your bra measurements. To do this, first measure your bust by wrapping the measuring tape around your chest. Write that measurement down and then take the measurement of your under bust by wrapping the measuring tape around the under part of your breast. This gives you the band size. With the band size, if you got an even number, add 4 inches to that measurement. If you got an odd number, add 5 inches to that measurement. Write that final number down and then take the measurement of the space between your nipple and your under bust. This measurement is your starting chain measurement. Lastly, subtract your band size from your bust size. Your cup size is the difference in inches with that subtracted amount. Here's a photo to better understand. I've also linked a website that can help you convert this to centimeters for those who use the metric system. And if this was a bit confusing, I linked what I used to figure out my size as well. But essentially, after you figure out your bra size, you can figure out how big you want the bra cup to be. Here's a chart from Crow Chic Styles that state the width of the bra based on your size. I linked the description to the full website down below if you need more information or if you're having trouble figuring out the sizing. For reference, I am a 32B cup and my chain measurement is 3 inches. So for a 3 inch chain, I chain 11 to begin my bra cup. 
For the bralette I'm making in this video, I'll be using four different colors. You can use however many colors you personally want to use, but for me, I'm using a bunch of spring themed colors to create a cute little set with the shorts, in which I'll show you how to make later. The colors are linked in the description box as well in case you want to get any of these colors. So the first thing you're going to do is create a slip knot and chain 11. Like I said before, this is a 32B measurement, so if your bust is smaller or larger, check out the chart in the measuring section of this video to find out how many chains you'll need to do. The chain measurement equals the measurement we took earlier. Mine is 3 inches for reference. The next thing you're going to have to do is half double crochet into every stitch of that chain. To half double crochet, all you have to do is yarn over, put the hook into the first stitch, yarn over again and pull through, making sure there are three loops on your hook. Yarn over one more time and pull through all three loops. You're going to do this for every stitch and this creates your first row. After finishing the last stitch, your work should look something like this, and you're going to chain two and turn your work over. You're going to continue to half double crochet all the way down until the end of the row, but instead of chaining two, you're going to increase. Once you reach that last stitch, you're going to add three half double crochets into that last stitch. This is called an increase of two. So that was one half double crochet. That was two. And then three. After you finish all three half double crochets, you're going to continue to half double crochet on the other side. That increase basically helps you easily turn over to the other side. It also helps create the cup shape that you'll need for the bralette. You can go into any hole you see that's closest to the top. It won't be defined with the horizontal Vs, but it's actually really simple to figure out. Once you reach the end, you can go ahead and chain two and turn your work. For me, I'm going to add my second color now. In order to do that, I just wrap the new color over the hook and then chain two with that new color and then I turn the work and use the new color to half double crochet down the row. While I crochet down the row, I make sure that I weave in the old color as I go so I don't have to weave in that many ends when I'm finished with the project. To weave in as I go, all I do is keep the old yarn pressed against the project and when I yarn and insert my hook to start my half double crochet, I make sure that the old yarn is over my hook. When I yarn over with the new yarn, it traps the old yarn within and then I'll pull through the new color for the half double crochet, which then weaves in the old color. Then I'll finish the half double crochet by yarning over and pulling through all three loops. I personally weave in the old color three to four times just to make sure it's secure and then I'll cut the rest of the yarn off. Once you reach the top of the row, you're going to repeat the three half double crochets into the top stitch and then continue to half double crochet normally down the rest of the row. At the end, chain two and turn your work. 
You're going to repeat this over and over until the cup width reaches your liking. Here's a chart once more that shows the different widths for your personal bra cup size. For me, I did a total of 12 rows. For the colors I'm using in this video, I did two rows per color, and then I used the first color as the last two rows for the bralette, as you can see here. Once you reach the last stitch you've made to make it the size you desire, finish that stitch, chain one, and then cut the yarn leaving a tail you can weave in. Pull that yarn with the hook to secure the last stitch properly. Another way you can finish the bralette is on the last row before you're done, you can add the bra strap to the area where you would add your increases so you wouldn't have to do it later on. So what you would do is crochet normally. In this alternate way, I'm using single crochet. Once you reach the part where you would normally add three crochets, you're going to add only one crochet and then chain 150 to 250, depending on how long you want your bra strap to be. For smaller straps, you can easily tie the straps around your neck to keep the bra on your body. For longer straps, straps you can create holes in the body of the bralette to tie the straps in the back. I'll be showing this later but you can decide how you want the straps to be. Whether you want to do them while you create the bralette or add them on as a last step, it's all up to you. After you finish the first cup, you're going to want to create a second bra cup using the same method that I showed earlier. Once you're done with both cups, you can honestly do so much with the bottom half of the bralette. You can make it long enough to be a crop top, you can add a single layer to make it an actual bra. The possibilities are honestly endless. For me, I'm going to make it a regular bralette for this tutorial, nothing too dramatic. After your second cup is created, you're going to take the yarn of your choosing and chain 11. You can make the chain longer if you want the back to be longer, but it's up to you. For mine, I chained 11. Once you chain 11, attach the chain to the edge of the bra cup. I personally attached it using single crochet and proceeded to single crochet the first row. Once you reach the end of the bra cup, attach the second bra, making sure it's facing the right direction. I attached it by single crochet into the second bra cup, making sure to go in from the back. Continue to crochet down until the end of the second bra cup, then chain 11, or the same amount you chained at the beginning of the first bra cup. After you chain 11, you're going to half double crochet into each stitch, making your way back to the other end of the bralette.
Once you reach the end, you're going to chain two and turn your work. Repeat this process over and over until the bralette is at its perfect length for you. For this one in the video, I did 12 rows. Once you're done with your preferred amount of rows, you're going to chain one, cut the yarn, and pull the yarn to secure the last row. We're almost done with the bralette. The last thing we have to do is create an area where the straps can go to keep the bra on your body and create the bra straps if you haven't already. If you turn the bralette around and fold the two ends towards the center, this is essentially the back area where the straps will go. The straps will need holes to go into in order to tighten up the back so it can fit perfectly. So we have to make strap holders or uh, brackets, the sh strap Band. I'm not too sure what they're called. So what you're going to do is create a slip knot and attach the yarn to the edge of the side of the bralette back. To attach it, I did a slip stitch. Then I proceeded to slip stitch the entire row. To slip stitch, all you have to do is put the hook into the stitch, yarn over, and pull through the loop that's on your hook. Slip stitching the first row makes it look so much more neat and professional to me. And make sure you're slip stitching gently so when you want to work into it later, it's not difficult for you. Also, make sure you're slip stitching with the outside of the bra facing you. That way the slip stitches will show up on the outside. After you finish slip stitching that row, chain two and turn your work. Then half double crochet into the slip stitches you just did. It's gonna be a bit of a struggle, but it's worth it. So take your time and make sure you're going through both loops of the slip stitch. At the end, chain two and turn your work. This row is gonna be a lot easier. This is also the row where you'll add the holes for the straps to go through. What you're gonna do is half double crochet into the first two stitches. Then you're gonna chain one. The chain one takes place of the next stitch in which you're going to skip. So skip the next stitch and half double crochet into the stitch after the one you skipped. After that, you're gonna half double crochet into the next stitch and then chain one. Skip the next stitch and half double crochet into the next two stitches. Depending on how long your backing is, you're going to continue this pattern until you reach the end of the row. Then chain one, cut the yarn, and pull through to secure. The holes that the skip stitches created make a wide enough hole for the straps to fit in. And now the backing is complete, but you do have to repeat this on the other side. For the straps, if you've chosen to create them last, create a slip knot and attach it to the top of the bra cup where we were increasing while creating them. I used a slip stitch to attach, then chain from 150 to 250. For my bralette, I chained 150. Once you reach 150, chain one, cut the yarn and pull the yarn with the hook, making the strap secure. You're gonna do this for the other bra cup and then you're complete. Now you're just gonna have to weave in all the ends that are hanging around with a darning needle. I like to go into three to four loops when I weave in my ends and I go through them twice just to make sure it's extra secure. Sometimes even three, honestly. Once they're weaved in, cut the excess yarn off and then we can take the straps of the bralette and put them into the strap backing thingy we made earlier. To put the straps into the holes, all you have to do is add them in diagonally. 
You can make the straps go back without them crossing if you like though, it's a personal preference. But when you put them in the holes, make sure that they do go across each other diagonally. That way when you pull on the straps, it'll tighten. You can skip holes too if you desire. And that's essentially it to creating a bralette. You can now let your creativity take you to greater heights and create amazing designs with this pattern. You'll need to take the measurements of the area in which you want the skirt or shorts to sit on your waist and the measurement of the widest part of your hips. The next tutorial we have is for the shorts. You can also make a skirt with this pattern by omitting just one tiny part, but I will show you when we get there. The shorts I'm making are actually a part of the bralette set earlier in the video, so the colors are exactly the same. What you're going to do first is make a slip knot and chain 10. The chain is going to be the start of the ribbing for your waistband on the shorts. After you chain 10, you're going to half double crochet into every stitch in the chain. For a half double crochet, all you have to do is yarn over, put your hook inside the stitch, yarn over again, and pull through, making sure you have three loops on your hook. Yarn over one more time and pull through all three loops. Do this for the entire row, and once you get to the end, you're going to chain two and turn your work. From now on, every single row will be exactly the same. You're going to work in the back loops of each stitch. You're going to work in only one loop, the back loop. If you look here, there's a horizontal V. The stitch closest to you is the front loop, and the stitch farthest from you is the back loop. You're going to half double crochet into the back loop. You're going to yarn over, put your hook into the back loop only, yarn over again, and pull through, making sure that you have three loops on your hook, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. Doing this gives the waistband a ribbed look. That's all you're going to do for this entire waistband section. To figure out how many rows you have to do, you're going to take your waist measurement and subtract it by four. So if my waist is 26 inches, for example, I would make my waistband ribbing 23 or 24 inches long since it'll stretch. Doing this will make the shorts or skirt stay on your waist without needing a drawstring. For me, I did a total of 49 rows. When you try on the shorts or skirt as you go, you'll struggle a little bit to put on the ribbing over your waist since it's smaller, but it'll get easier to put on as you create the leg section. Trust me on this. Once you finish the waistband, you're going to slip stitch the row to the beginning of the project, making it round. After slip stitching, put the seam in the middle. Try to make the seam as in the middle as possible because this is where the seam is going to lie on the back of the shorts or skirt. You can measure both sides of the seam to make sure it's evenly in the middle. What you're going to do next is take two stitch markers and place them on the sides of the project. These stitch markers are basically here to tell you where you need to increase on each row. Once you have the stitch markers in place, chain two. If you're changing colors like I am, before you chain two, put the new color on the hook and then chain with that color. This attaches the new color pretty easily.
Go ahead and turn your work, then half double crochet normally. No back loops or anything until you get to the stitch marker. I make sure to weave in the ribbon color as I go so I won't have to weave it in later. To weave in as I go, all I do is keep the old yarn pressed against the project and when I yarn over and insert my hook to the start of my half double crochet, I make sure the old yarn is over my hook. When I yarn over with the new color, it traps the old color within and then I'll pull through the new color for the half double crochet, which then weaves in the old color. Then I'll finish the half double crochet by yarn running over and pulling through all three loops. I personally weave in the old color three to four times just to make sure it's secure and then I'll cut the rest of the yarn off. At the stitch marker, you're going to add two half double crochets into one stitch. This is called increasing. Once you're done increasing, put the stitch marker into the second half double crochet you did in the increase. By the way, there's going to be points in this video that won't align with the text or what I'm saying, but just bear with me, I made a couple of mistakes when filming, but the text and my words are 100% accurate, so make sure you pay attention to those. The mistakes aren't dramatic enough to make you confused or anything, so don't worry. I got you. After you finish, continue to half double crochet all the way down until you reach the second stitch marker. Add the increase where the stitch marker is and place the stitch marker again into the second half double crochet you did in the increase. Then continue to half double crochet normally until you reach the end seam or the end of the row. At the end of the row, slip stitch into the first stitch after the chain and then chain two and turn your work. I added a stitch marker to tell me when I've reached the end of the row, but this is optional if you have experience with crocheting. Continue to half double crochet until you get to the stitch marker, add an increase, and then half double crochet normally until you get to the next stitch marker, where you'll increase again. Then half double crochet normally until you reach the end of the row. slip stitch it together, chain two, and repeat. You will repeat these increases until the shorts or skirt reaches the widest part of your hips. Once it reaches that area, you'll be able to remove the stitch markers that indicate where you'll increase and crochet around the entire shorts normally with no more increases. Here's some info for the rows for my specific sizing. I basically did 19 rows of the increase rows I just showed you how to do. Then once it reached the widest part of my hips, I stopped increasing and did regular half double crochet rows for eight rows. After that, I added an inseam to create pant legs. After that, I did six rows for each leg. If you're creating a skirt, you can skip the inseam part and just continue to create regular half double crochets until it reaches a length that you're satisfied with. To create the inseam part if you're creating shorts, try on the shorts and then chain until the chain comfortably reaches the back of the pants. I apologize this is out of focus, but if you're comfortable with the amount you chained, take the pants off and then connect the chain to the other side of the pants. I slip stitch it to attach. After it's attached, chain two and turn the work around. Then half double crochet around one leg for six rows or however many rows you want the legs to be.
When you get to the chain you did to separate the legs, you're going to half double crochet into it as you would any other chain. At the end of the row, slip stitch the end of the row to the beginning, chain two, and turn your work to continue. Once you've reached the end of the amount of rows you want to do, end the row by slip stitching into the beginning stitch, chain one, and cut the yarn, pulling it to secure the row. Now you'll repeat this for the other leg, but first you have to create a row by creating a slip knot and slip stitching onto the pant leg. Then half double crochet around for the same amount of rows as the last. Yeah. Once you reach the end, you can end it the same way as the first leg and weave in all your ends. And now your shorts are complete. For the leg warmers, you'll need to get the measurement of how long you want the leg warmers to be and then the circumference of your calf or where you want the leg warmers to stop at. Then subtract the circumference by 2 to get how wide the leg warmers should be so they can fit perfectly. Here's a little size reference card. The last tutorial I have in this spring themed video are leg warmers. I wasn't going to do them at first, but I think you can wear leg warmers whenever you want, not just winter time, and I absolutely love how they turned out. What you're going to do is make a slip knot in chain 50. The chain 50 is the length that I personally chose for the leg warmers, but you can do them however long or short you want them to be. After I chain 50, I'm going to go ahead and half double crochet all the way down the chain, which will create my first row. To half double crochet, all you have to do is yarn over, put the hook inside the stitch, yarn over again and pull through, making sure that you have three loops on your hook. Yarn over one more time and pull through all three loops. Again, you're going to do this for the entire row. Once you get to the end of the row, chain two and turn your work. For the remaining rows in the project, you're gonna work into the back loop of each stitch. This here is the front loop, and this here is the back loop. You're gonna have to double crochet into the back loop only. This creates the ribbed effect that we'll need for the flat leg warmers. If you don't like the ribbed effect, then just half double crochet normally and the leg warmers will still come out really cute. At the end of the row, chain two and turn your work, and continue working half double crochets into the back loop. For me, I made sure to make the leg warmers a bit smaller than my calves so that when I put them on, they'll stretch to the perfect size. For the total rows, I did 30 rows.
Once you finish the 30 rows, slip stitch the row and then chain one. After you chain one, cut the yarn and pull what you just cut. This will close off the row. Then you can go ahead and weave everything in. This is what it would look like on all the way stretched out. And then here's what it would look like scrunched down. If you wanted to have more of a scrunched down look, when you push it down, you can chain more than 50 when you're creating the leg warmers. So that was just a basic tutorial on how to create leg warmers. You can add a bunch of cute details like puffs, ribbing, anything you can think of. For these particular, I wanted to go with a nature leafy theme, so I decided to create ruffles at the end of the leg warmers and some leafy details. To do the ruffles, all I did was create a slip knot and slip stitched into the leg warmers where the seam is. Make sure that you're doing this on the wrong side of the project. So don't pull your leg warmers outside in until you're sure you're done with the details and everything. After I connected the yarn of my choice to the leg warmers, I chained three and then added five double crochets to the exact stitch I connected to. For double crochet, all you have to do is yarn over, put the hook into the stitch, yarn over again, and pull through, making sure you have three loops on your hook. Then yarn over and pull through two loops, in which you'll have two loops remaining, yarn over again, and pull through the rest of the loops. This is a double crochet. You'll do this five times into this one stitch, and then for the rest of the stitches around, you can do it from four to six, whichever you prefer. I did six to make it look like super roughly. Once you get to the end of the leg warmers, slip stitch into the first chain you did with the ruffles, chain one, cut off, and then pull the yarn through. After this, turn the leg warmers inside out. To create leaves, I used the tutorial I linked in the description. After I did all the steps that I was told to do in the video, I chained 20 after I finished a leaf and then attached that to the leg warmers. I created one more but chained 13 for that one and after attaching that to the leg warmer, I created another chain of 50 and sewed it through the leg warmer and then tied it like a ribbon. To attach everything, I used a darning needle and stuck in through from the front and then weaved the ends of the chain into the inside of the leg warmer.
it looks so cute doesn't it and yes these are two different tones of green i didn't realize this until literally just now so oops all right so this is the first ever set that i've personally made and when i first was making these if you can tell throughout the tutorial it kind of looked like the sides where you're increasing looked really sharp so i had to go back and bring it all the way down back to like around right here and then i had to stop the increasing and i explained everything throughout the tutorial earlier but after i started over halfway and fixed it it looks so much better and i love these shorts and i think they look really cute like they came out so cute and the cool thing about these is like i can turn them into a skirt if i wanted to i can make them um, long pants if I wanted to I could make them a, a long skirt if I like it, it can even a dress like if I connected this top and just like right here I just continued but when it reached my hips I just increased so that it can fit this could literally be a dress and like just knowing how to make um, bra cups and how to measure the pants correctly and make the seam in the middle you can make anything and I think that's the coolest part with this pattern is like the creative, the the cre the creative possibilities are endless with this, in my opinion. And yeah, I am genuinely in love with this. I I'm this is probably my favorite piece I've ever crocheted at the moment. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm gonna show you something next. But this, I really, 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 really really am happy about honestly so yeah okay so right here is the leaf nature themed bralette that i created um it is a sim almost finished set with the leg warmers that i'm going to show you i don't know if i showed you yet or if i'm going to in a little bit but this is a matching top to those leg warmers and i'm also going to do a matching skirt that goes with it as well i ran out of the beige yarn and all of the white yarns i have aren't matching this and i wasn't able to go to the store unfortunately so i couldn't do it for this video but i'm definitely going to post a, f a picture of the full set on instagram once i finish it i think this is super cute and i'm happy that i decided to add ruffles to the top and the bottom of the bralette if you can see closely here, I added small little leaf details. Um, I haven't done it on this side just yet, but I will do so soon. And on the back, also the little tie band, I added little leaf um, details as well. And I thought the little details would make it really cute and fits the spring theme and the nature theme of it. And I think it's really cool how creative you can be with the bralettes and everything. Um, this one and the one that I did with the short set, those, these both are done with acrylic yarn and the ones in a second I'm going to show you are all done with cotton. So I wanted to have a little variety in terms of like the, the way that the piece looks in general because each piece looks different depending on the yarn that you use. So here I have the leaf leg warmers, as you can see here. They match the bralette almost perfectly and i think that these are probably the best leg warmers i've ever made so far um i think they're super cute super spring inspired and i love the little leaf details here that i've made they came out super cute and you could either wear them all the way up or scrunch them down to your liking whichever you prefer i kind of prefer the scrunched it down look but sometimes i'll probably wear it up yeah they're super easy to make and I'm gonna make a whole bunch of different versions of this. Here are some of the other bralettes I've made with these patterns. I'm seriously going to be making a whole bunch and not just bralettes, but dresses, crop tops, and bras that I can wear. It saves me so much money and I'm honestly super happy with how these came out. The same with the shorts. I can make a bunch of loungewear with this pattern and I hope that these patterns were super easy for you all to follow. 
I was originally gonna have like 10 tutorials in this video, but I realized that that was kind of pushing it and I can always make a part two. So stay tuned for part two as that will be coming out sooner than you think. I hope you enjoyed all the tutorials and designs in this video. If you create any of them, definitely show me on my Instagram, Cozy Cardigan. I would love to see what you came up with creatively in terms of your design, or even if you just wanna make an exact replica of the ones I showed here. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.